Okay, so now we're going to move on to mixing, but real quick, before we get started on it, I went ahead and added a bass line. That was the only thing we were really missing, and we didn't really have time to do it in those past videos. So what we did is I threw on this bass line here, just a simple, nice little straightforward bass line, just the same chord progression. And just to show something that we didn't really cover was how you can change the sound of your MIDI. Okay, so this is a nice little bass here, but I can take and change it to an acoustic fretless if I want to. Okay, I can change it to a pink bass. Okay, kind of crazy there. Okay, but let's actually, let's go ahead and try the Woody fretless. See what that sounds like. Kind of a little attitude there. And as we're mixing, that's the nice thing. Part of mixing is making everything kind of fit together. And sometimes part of that process is actually changing the sound that you were already using. So it's kind of nice to um, to have all of these kind of tools in place that we've been working on. Using the Mini Grand here, we could change to an electric piano if we wanted to. We could change to a synthesizer. Okay, and then having these guitar parts being run through 11, we can change the amplifier that they're running through as we're mixing. Okay, so there's a lot of flexibility and and that's, like I said, part of the mixing process is making everything fit together. So let's go ahead and start talking about that. So I'm going to hit Command equals or Control equals on a Windows system. And we'll hit that plus sign. Move that around there. Okay, and you'll see that here is our same exact mix, of course. Everything looks the same. <laughs> looks all just the same in the mix window as it does in the edit window and basically the purpose of mixing is trying to get everything kind of fitting together all the elements of your session fitting together all the sounds fitting together and put on some kind of stereo or surround sound or, or mono medium that can be distributed to the masses because right now if I want to take this song and play it for somebody I've got to have my Pro Tools rig here. I've got to have my my session that has my audio files in it and everything like that and I and that has, you know, the Mini Grand and 11 Free and all those things like that. Everything is playing together from all these different sources. And so if I want somebody to listen to this, they've got to sit here and on my system and listen to it. So in order to get it this project into a medium that anybody can listen to. You can listen on your your um, your MP3 player or a CD player or whatever. You've got to mix it down, okay? And so, and part of that part of that process of mixing is making sure that all the levels are nice and balanced. Making sure that we've got some a stereo spread. That there's some things in the the right speaker, some things in the left speaker, kind of creates a, an ambient kind of scenery there and and then finally getting it onto a an individual audio file that incorporates all of those elements together in one audio file or a mix down file okay and so right now we're kind of doing that that's kind of happening because as we're listening to it it is being mixed down to stereo track so right now all of this stuff is going out analog one and two okay so if we want to see this a little better we're gonna go to track new and we're gonna create stereo master fader okay so the master fader is gonna show us what is already going out analog one and two you see how it is analog one and two as well so this analog one and two is what's going to our speakers and headphones or whatever however we're listening back that's those two channels to go to left and right. One is left, two is right. Okay. You can see that's what we're 
that's what we're listening to right there okay and as we adjust things this will be adjusted as well basically what we want to do is we want to capture this feed this signal that's going out to our speakers and headphones and we want to record that as an audio file and then have that audio file that has everything mixed together and be able to distribute that so that's really what that's the gist of what mixing is is taking and putting everything down to that one or you know one multi-channel audio file so two tracks of audio left and right okay and so in the process we have to there's a, a bunch of things to consider one is we want to make sure this doesn't go red because um, if it goes red then it's distorting and that distortion is going to be audible and it's going to reduce the clarity in our mix okay and another thing that a lot of people do is they try to turn up their mix really loud and they notice this starts going red and then they pull down the master fader okay and that's just a that's kind of a, a bad mixing practice because you're kind of lying to yourself because what you're doing is it is reducing the distortion that's happening but Pro Tools is kind of cheating for you because when you pull this down Pro Tools is actually going down and taking down the output of each of these tracks okay so in the end it's not distorting but better mixing practices is to keep this at zero and if this goes red you need to pull down all of these tracks okay hopefully that makes some sense but as as you start mixing you'll notice that there's different places that distortion can come up between between um, your inserts here which we'll talk about um, and av after the track and, and before the master okay so as we're working on stuff we want to get these leveled and balanced and then also we want to adjust our panning so let's take a listen so that guitar okay you hear how that's all the way in the right speaker and all the way in the left speaker now okay so for example our piano which of course stopped right as I hit solo okay our piano is a stereo piano so the left is going to be more of the low end of the piano and the right is going to be more of the high end so we're playing more mainly high end so it's naturally in the right side so you see how we get this nice stereo kind of feel there if we wanted to we could use the panners there on the piano to try to make that a little bit more extreme okay and if we bring the rhythm guitar in a little bit it's not so extreme just in our left ear there's a little bit of signal in our right ear not as much as in the left and okay and then we can adjust the levels easy way to if we do get our red like that is we can put on the all group pull everything down a little bit turn that group off and then by holding command and clicking on the fader or sorry by holding option and clicking on the fader we can make that jump right back to zero so option on Mac or alt on PC okay so now we're right back at zero or unity is what it's called which basically means that the signal is passing through without being turned up or turned down. Okay. Okay, there we go. So we're a little free, kind of free from the red zone there. Okay, so some of our, there is kind of a general rule for panning, which are our lead elements and our bass and our kick drum are usually right up the middle. Okay, but then everything else just kind of sits side to side. You know, we want to create kind of a wide image, so you don't want to put everything kind of centered. 
And uh, a big mistake a lot of people make is with the stereo instrument tracks. You've got this nice stereo piano, and you know the temptation is going to be to keep it just hard left and hard right. But maybe your mix will be a little better suited if you kind of take that piano and push it off to one side or the other. Okay, and so you're going to want to go through and move these panners and try to to widen up your mix. Okay, that's going to help you to make everything balance as well. Okay, make things fit together. And so as we move along, we'll talk about some other techniques that are going to help us to make our tracks mesh together a little bit better and fit together. And the goal is really to keep everything clear and audible that you can listen to each individual track the whole way through and be able to hear what it's doing. Okay, It doesn't necessarily have to be loud and up front. It could be back in the mix and, and soft, but you need to be able to hear it. Okay, That's one of the kind of fundamental rules of mixing. Okay, so we'll move along to inserts in just a moment.